All right, so today we are going to be testing NVIDIA's automatic tuning or automatic GPU overclocking using the NVIDIA app. Now, I know this is not something new. GeForce Experience also had this, but this can be found under system and then performance. You can just enable automatic tuning, as you can see there. And uh, what this one has done for me is a plus 90 megahertz on the core and plus 200 megahertz on the VRAM. Now this is definitely a conservative overclock. You can definitely push it a little bit more if you just do a manual tune. Right, anyway, so today we'll be testing this with the Pilot RX 4070 Super. It does not have any ability to adjust the power limit. So we'll just be going on the GPU tuning plus 90 megahertz and the VRAM tuning plus 200 megahertz. That is paired with a 14600K of CPU and that again is paired with 32 gigabytes of DDR5, 6400 megatransfers per second CL32 memory. Now, first up, we've got one of the most optimized games I've ever laid my eyes on, and that's Ark Survival Ascended. That was sarcasm, by the way. On the left, we've got the overclocked uh, results, and on the right, we've got the stock results. And as you can see, there's really no difference. The, the stock result is actually slightly ahead. It's not perfectly in sync, but at the end, they are pretty much the same, right? All right, so next up, we've got a Robocop Rogue City. Once again, at 1440p on the Epic preset, just uh, using DLA. I'm not using any upscaling or frame generation for these tests. Now, this one synced up pretty well. Um, it's kind of difficult because it, uh, I mean, obviously the enemies are dynamic. It's not, uh, they're not always in the same place. But as you can see, uh, we do have a, a 200 megahertz overclock on the left uh, on the memory and then a slight uh, GP overclock on the core clocks on, uh, as well. And this is really, once again, not that big a difference at this point in time with seeing around two to three frames per second difference in the average the lows are slightly better on the left but really it's just a margin of error stuff you know around for own variance so nothing once again to write home about all right, so next up, we've got Lords of the Fallen, our third Unreal Engine 5 game. Now, the reason why there's not that big a difference is because generally with these GPUs, if you can't increase the power, you are power limited or voltage limited. In my case, I am almost always either power limited or voltage limited. So there's not much room for any performance increase. And as you can see, the performance is pretty much identical. Just the lows once again on the left, slightly better but I'd, once again unreal engine 5 is a very very inconsistent so don't read too much into these results All right so next up we're going to move to cyberpunk 2077 and i just use the in-game benchmark for this one just to keep it the same All right so as you can see um it's really once again not that big a difference we did see a slight stutter on the left but it's also just a run run variance that's why people usually run these tests three to five times and then just take the average from them i just wanted to show you what the real-time performance differences are and as you can see the the one on the left is actually slightly behind so no gains or whatsoever with an overclock you'll definitely have a much better time if you just spend some time and do a manual tune you can do an overclock alongside an undervolt or just do an undervolt with the lower temps the boost clock might be slightly higher so just so you know <laughs> The, the difference in the core clock here is 3%. So we're not we're not going to be seeing anything major at all. So I just wanted to show you, it like if you are just lazy at overclocking and you just wanted to see what kind of performance you can get by using an auto overclock, this is what you are looking at, right? It's a pretty much identical performance so far. Now, I just wanted to kick on DLSS frame generation. We are still running at native resolution. I just wanted to see if if we do have higher frame rates we if we actually do see a bit of a difference and once again not really we are seeing a slight lead on the left now but that's two frames per second at 130 frames per second so <laughs> it's not even two percent uh, performance increase remember if you increase the the core clock of your gpu by 10 percent, it doesn't mean you're going to see a 10 percent gain it's just a theoretical 10% increase and you'd see that probably in a synthetic benchmark but for gaming 10% usually equates around 6% max in in my experience now as i said this is also a very conservative overclock you, i've actually pushed the memory to plus 1000 megahertz the core clock only to around plus 105 for it to be stable but as you can see this is really not making a big difference at all your your mileage may vary remember it's uh this is going to be card dependent cooling 
power limit, all that kind of stuff. So let's see what happens with Doom Eternal here. We've got 1440p Ultra Nightmare settings native with ray tracing enabled this time. And on the left, it's slightly ahead, but once again, the the sequences aren't perfectly in sync because, uh, I mean, it's Doom, so it's uh, impossible to actually have two identical runs. And uh, once again, that's why people just uh, do three or five runs and get an average. But as you can see, the performance is pretty much identical, although our 0.1% lows are slightly lower on the left. And it might be that the, the core clock is actually unstable or the core overclock. All right, so you've, here we've got Dragon's Dogma 2, once again at 1440p high native, I uh, just selected the progressive instead of interlaced setting. And here we actually see a little bit of a difference, right? So we are sitting with 92 frames per second on the left and 88 frames per second on the right. That equates to around 4%. four <laughs> so pretty much in line with our overclock, but once again, run to run variance, I'm not going to <laughs> read too much into that All right next up we've got starfield and i know starfield is a kind of cpu bound but i use the gp bound settings here and uh, once again the performance is pretty much identical nothing to nothing to see here so we'll just move on to the next one All right so next up we've got hellblade 2 which is extremely demanding here we are running at 1440p high now this is also an unreal engine 5 game so just compare these results to arc survival ascent right? <laughs> we are getting around 20 percent more performance in this game and technically i think this game looks better although you can't really compare the games because the one is an open world game this is a very linear but i just thought it's a very interesting arc survival senate is very terribly optimized all right so where does that leave us with an auto overclock as i mentioned earlier your mileage may vary and depending on your card your cooling this is a very basic gpu with the no power limit increases a two fan cooler so it's definitely not the the best for these kind of scenarios and as you can see in this game we are actually running at around 75 celsius and it starts to down clock a little bit that's just how thermal boost works on these gpus the higher the temperature the more aggressively it starts to reduce the gpu clocks all right so where do we stand with the gpu auto overclock i say give it a shot if you do gain some performance then i mean it's free performance why not and if you don't gain anything then you've only wasted 20 minutes of your life all right hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did hit that like button hit the subscribe button and as always we hope to see you in the next one